Okay, so here we are in Dimension, uh, and now I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, create new. I'm gonna walk you through my workflow. I'm not gonna go into every menu and every button, but I'm gonna show you exactly how I work uh, to set up my renders. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and import the files that we created. So import 3D model, and we can start with the buckles. Open, uh, you can do F so you can see them that they're loaded. Import 3D model can do the body. Uh, import the handles. And then the straps. I'm going to leave the stitching to the end because usually if we have a file which has like really multiple tiny objects, sometimes it takes a bit longer. like this part and then I'll do stitching okay see if that takes as long as that one. Oh, came out really nice okay so now before before I do anything here's here's something to keep in mind name everything because it just comes in as these you know ZBrush groups and, and naming so it's really gonna be Especially if you have uh, if you have many elements and you need to you know select them and uh, get into the habit of naming naming stuff. So stitches. Step two: select everything and put them in a folder. Don't move any of the parts without putting them in the folder, because then you have to go into the part and you gotta reset each each one. So make sure you have them all in one group and make sure you move you move the group. Let's focus. All right, so here's how Dimension works. Now you can render this and it will just render on a white surface and you can import this into, into Photoshop because uh, it actually exports uh, a PSD or PNG depending what you want to do. Or you can actually render this on a photo. So as you can see, just a simple uh, green, uh, you know, simple table. And actually, this photo is not actually not a photo because these files usually are done with uh, the table is a photo and the background is just a blurred image with a bit of bokeh. So I think it's a digital file. And you'll notice that if you go to match image and usually it, it creates the environment light, matches the sunlight and matches the camera perspective. If, let's say we go ahead and we use, let's try this one, okay? See, and if I go OK, it's gonna take the light from the scene and it's gonna match match the perspective. Now then you can you can go ahead and you can move it around, you know, do and see which which angle angle works for you. And then you have you have the option to rotate the photo, which is this. So you can, you can actually rotate the light. But the environment light is subtle. So you can, or you can also play with the intensity. The other thing you can have is you can play with sunlight. So you can rotate the sunlight. So now if you think about it, this image, uh, this photo, the sunlight should be coming from the back. But you can, because you're using environment, you can use the uh, sunlight as your second, you know, second fill light or something like that, like a studio light. So, uh, studio, not, like a light, you know, uh, artificial light. And you can play around with the intensity just to get some, some shadows. Don't, if you're going to use that technique, don't go too crazy with it because you, it's, you're not going to affect the background. It's, it's, it's going to do a drop shadow for you, but the light's not going to affect the background. Because, so if you use this technique, just use it really subtle. Usually you would you would like to keep the sunlight uh, you know matched to the image, and feel free to play around with. Uh, what I love about this is you can actually if you uh, you know link this to your library of uh, three, uh, you know Adobe Stock, you can actually take photos which still have you know the Adobe Stock on them, and you can try them out see if see if the if you like the you know, the perspective, if you like the lighting, if it works for you before before buying it, right? So as you notice, this is how fast it just sets up everything. Like sometimes you need to tweak a bit. So if you look at the lines, they're not 
you know you can you can see they're not actually perfect but it doesn't take that long to you know to get the results that you're looking for and you see how beautiful that light is now because this is a more you know artificially lit kind of image you can play around with the sunlight and you, and use that as your as your key light and maybe have the light from this side or have it from this side so you can whatever works better to catch the you know the details of of your of your bag right you can play with around with the environment lighting you can the intensity you can rotate that maybe get some subtle you know if you look at if you look at this area if you rotate you see it becomes darker or brighter depending on on what you're working on okay but as I said, for my for my image, I'm going to use the the green one because I'm I'm going for a more of a more of a like nature kind of uh, kind of look. So I'm going to go image background and I'm going to use this and I'm going to go match image. Okay. So what I want to make sure I want to make sure this line matches the. The line on the table so that's going to be my my guide and you can also right just get it okay and then i'm gonna move that maybe zoom in a bit uh, i want this like to be really big okay the other thing i want to do is i want to uh, is something like that i want to select the group and I'm going to raise it up. Actually, just make sure there's the group. Make sure it's sitting on the floor. And then just raise it up just a bit. So I think 0.1. Just so it gives you a better shadow if you just have it not not directly on the on the surface, just a bit, you know, over it. To give you a nice, a nice contact shadow underneath it. All right. So let's start uh, setting up the uh, the lights and and the shaders. So we go to environment, and here we can play around with the uh, with the sunlight. For this image, the sun. If you look at the the background, you, the sun should be coming from from the right side. Okay. So I can go ahead and I can rotate this, and maybe play around and have the sun doesn't have to be exactly because it's just from the right so you can you can play you know with different looks see what whatever works for you I kind of like this just has a nice shadow here uh, you know a, a bit dark so you have a nice contrast between the two pieces the two parts Something like that should should be working. Okay, so now that we have uh, the lights, that's that's it. You can you can as I said you can play around with the with this, but it's not going to be a huge effect. Uh, and you can play around with the intensity, but I'm actually I'm happy with because once we add the shaders, you might need to tweak a bit. Now, first let's go ahead and use the assets that come with the. Uh, with the software and for this one I'm gonna try uh, the leather first so we're gonna go ahead and just so just drag and drop okay not that one I'm gonna drag the other one okay so that's the first first leather that I'm gonna work with and you'll notice it's already selected the shader for us and here we have the edits so we have repeat so how many times you want this to be repeated so i think something around three should look fine and here's the roughness so if you think this is way too shiny you can you can tone it down and then you can have the scale of the leather detail if you want the scale to be you know smaller or bigger or the de details density And how, if you want random detail rotation, just going to play around with these, with these tiny, you know, veins. Okay. Here underneath we have uh, technical parameters. So you can play around. It's like tweaking the, uh, you know, the 
how bright you want this, how contrast, how much contrast. Let me, let me let's say we're going for a for a you know a red kind of uh, leather, and you want this to be less saturated. You can tweak that. So instead of you know tweaking the the actual texture, you can play around with this. Now this has color, but some some of them have instead of color they have texture, so you can still tweak these here. So let's say uh, we're gonna go with uh, luminosity of 0.5, and maybe. Well, not that much contrast, maybe something like this, and less saturation. Okay. What else? Under miscellaneous, you can have the resolution. So when you're setting up everything, leave everything at one one K or lower. Uh, once you're ready, just go ahead and do four uh, K for that. Okay. I'm just just gonna leave it now, and you can you can also do a randomizer. So it's just gonna change the the, the texture. Now we're going to go back and I'm going to do the same thing. Or what I can do is you can select the straps. Okay. And I can actually uh, color pick the texture and you, you actually color pick the texture, not, not the color. So you go ahead here and just click on that. And it's just going to, now you have to make sure if you start tweaking this. So let's say I want to go and I'm going to make this a blue leather for whatever reason, it's going to change all of it, right? So make sure before you do that, you have this chain here, you just say, okay, just give it unlock. Just going to give back this to 1k. And then what I want for these straps, I want to try, let's see if a brighter, you know, leather might work. And then we can we can play on with this. Maybe more contrast. And if you think you would like to have this uh, repeat less, you can just play around with this. Now I'm going to do the same for the other ones. So select the straps. I'm just going to go color pick. I'm going to use this because I know that it's going to be the exact same color. So you'll notice this one, the detail is like really small. Now you can start, you can zoom in, but before you do that, let's say you have your camera set up, just go ahead and bookmark your camera. So you go bookmark one and just add, you know, cam one. Okay. So now I can go in. Okay, this is this detail is way too small, so I can select that, and I'm gonna go. Uh, I don't know something like one, I think. See, we forgot to unlink it. So let's go back to three, unlink, and for this one, I'm gonna use one. If I zoom out, that may be too big. I think two. Oh, that works, and I'm gonna go back to our camera. All right, so we already have. A really nice, you know, uh, shading and the lighting is looking really good. So let's go ahead and add a bit of uh, metal to the buckles. So let's go ahead and use maybe use the, this darkened. Okay, or let's try the scratched one. It adds a bit of more texture. You can so you can you can play around with these. This is the this is the best thing about the software is you can just try looks before, you know, worrying about creating shaders from scratch or, or anything. I think I'm going to go with that one. Just, just fits the, the entire look. And finally, what I want to do is I want to add a bit of, you know, shader. Well, I don't need the shader actually. Just select the stitches and I'm just going to go and, you know, give it a color. Maybe something a bit brighter than the leather. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, camera one. 
And now we're we're ready to render. So you can test out the render here and it's going to give you like a render preview and you can see that we have uh, some nice shadows. You can see the lighting looks good. Uh, like gives we can we can actually see the shape of uh, of our <clears throat> of our bag. Okay. And you can you know make this bigger so you can see the details and you just let it, you know, uh, render for just a couple of seconds. Uh, make sure you have uh, handles selected, uh, click the arrow to go to the shader and make sure you have 4k and then do, do the same for the others and go body, click on the, uh, that one was already 4k shoulder straps, 4k. Yeah, for the stitching, I'll leave it 1K, so it's good. Okay, now render. Here, it's, it's really simple. You have uh, current view, or you can select camera. Let's say you have multiple cameras selected. You can actually render those. And here you name it. So I'm going to game this uh, bag dimension 01. And here you have low, medium, and high. I don't, I rarely use, I never use high and I rarely use medium for, for the purpose of what I use this just to, you know, test out some looks. I always use low. It's really fast uh, and rendering and the quality is really not that bad. So leave it at 16 bit. If you want 32 bits, you can go ahead and render 32 bits. I'm going to turn this into eight anyhow. So I'm going to leave it at uh, 16 and just and once you're ready, you can render. Now, you do have another option of rendering this in cloud, but I'm going to leave this for, for some other time. So go local, and I'm going to go ahead and start rendering this. And you'll notice how, how fast this start, uh, starts rendering. Because if you think about it, we don't have anything other than the bag. So it's creating a plane to catch the shadow, right? And we, the background is still a photo, so it's still going to use the same photo. The, the photo is, if, it's, if the photo is 4K, you're still going to have the quality of 4K photo, right? And it's just going to render the back. And you can see, this is, this is a really good, a really decent render. It's a really good render. So you can, you can easily see uh, what works, what doesn't work, and you know, you know, you'll show to the client. Or if it's your own project, you know how... Uh, you know, how much time you need to tweak, what other things you can, and you can try stuff. So you can, instead of having like, you know, setting up a couple of shaders and doing two, three, and just taking that much long to, you can test out, you know, 10, 10 to 20 different, uh, you know, looks. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and cancel all because I forgot to show you one thing, which is really important. Uh, let's go back to environment and you notice the, the render, which which half has finished uh the the render was uh really low so to tweak that just click in the gray area and here you have the canvas size so you can go ahead and do 2048 okay so i'm gonna leave that at 2k and i'm gonna go ahead and render this again finished rendering and it took four minutes and 41 seconds hey everybody I really hope you found this uh, tutorial helpful. If you want, you can check out part two where I go over different settings and different type of shaders. And if you want to learn how to create this duffel bag using Marvelous Designer and ZBrush, uh, there's a link below. All right, see you soon.